Okay. Hello, I'm Anke Herman from uh, Flamenco Dressmaking, I was about to say, and this is the very first episode of uh, a planned series of sewing business success story, and I'm very excited to welcome Victoria Baylor today, and I'm very <laughs> excited to ask her all, all sorts of questions and to let her tell her stories, to, her story to see how she got into sewing and what she's doing and any advice she would give to someone who's planning or maybe playing with the idea of doing the same thing. So Victoria, I'm going to put you in the spotlight. <laughs> I usually go. run away from that, but for you, definitely. I don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably all a bit like that. So I'm always thinking, oh, you know, if these guys are on stage, that's perfect. I'm just kind of fine behind this one. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, where are you based? Well, I live in the beautiful port city of Savannah, Georgia. I live on the outskirts of Savannah, and I have lived here since my college days, since I was about 18. I won't say my age, but um, it's been a little while now. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever the age is, it doesn't show. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so um, how, how did you get into sewing? Did you start as a, as a, have you always loved sewing or did you start did get in late? How, how on earth did you start sewing? Well, that's a good question. I, um, I started sewing actually when I was about seven or eight. Um, back then, you know, you're young, you pick up things. I was, I guess I was always kind of crafts, craftily um, inclined. So I crocheted, I knitted, and then my Barbie doll needed stylish jeans. So, I mean, where are you going to get stylish jeans for a Barbie doll? Well, you make them. Exactly. So back then I would hand sew and, um, you know, make, you know, clothes for my dolls. And then for a long period of time, I put it down and I just kind of focused on the crocheting and the knitting. And I would go to fabric stores and see all these crazy women, you know, huddled around the pattern tables and you know, running for fabric. And I was so glad I wasn't one of those nuts. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, you know, shunned them for a while. And then I actually started sewing again in, let's see, it was my senior year in high school at home ec. And then I think we made pillows. Um, but I didn't really get bit by the bug until my early 20s when I inherited my grandmother-in-law's sewing machine after she passed. And kind of to commemorate her legacy, I picked up sewing and then became obsessed. So that's how I got into it. That's exciting. I, that is amazing because, it, I mean, you know, if you'd asked me that question, I probably would have said pretty much exactly the same thing. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, exactly the same thing as little girl, lots of crochet, lots of knitting, perfectly best dressed dolls ever. And yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so absolutely. did you actually go on and study something fashion related or did you study something totally different and then kind of got into sewing and just took it from there? Well, this is where it's interesting. I actually, since the age of four, wanted to be a marine biologist. So I went to college for marine biology. I have a degree in marine science. Uh, for about 15 years, I uh, worked in the technical um, research industry. So I uh, went up, traveled the world, did research projects, did all this really cool stuff. Um, but on the side, in 2002, when I actually inherited, well, 2004, when I inherited her sewing machine, um, that's when I actually got hot and heavy with sewing and I did that alongside my career. So it was kind of my little side thing to do was to sew and it was my creative outlet, so to yeah. speak, but it wasn't never my, uh, you know, initial intent at all. It was kind of that little, I always call those little God wink moments when something like hijacks <laughs> your plans and, uh, you kind of take a whole different focus. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Well, I didn't, I didn't study anything like this either. I, I oh, wow. no, I'm actually, I went to uni to study languages. I'm actually, you know, I've got a degree in trans as a translator. And then I got oh, into wow. IT and started programming and software development. And so also had sewing always kind of, you know, there were a few years that I wouldn't do anything and then I'd pick yeah. it up again and then have these kind of phases. And, and um, yeah, only like, yeah, 11 years ago, that's when I thought, no, I mean, actually think about if I could do anything and didn't have to worry about whatever, this is what I do. And oh wow! I actually, sort of think oh, I'm just going to give it a go. Yeah, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, you know, didn't take the straight route either. 
Yeah, it's funny how that happens. Sounds like your career was a bit hijacked as well. Yeah, well, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and I actually, for a long time, I thought, you know, what's wrong with me? Why can't I, can't I ever stay in, in one thing? Or why can't I just pick a profession and then just stay there until I realized that all these things I did are actually really related. And really uh -huh. related, there's always the same thing, the same red thread that kind of, that as long as there's something technical combined with something creative, then I'm be ha I'll have, I'm, I'm happy. And that's translation and that's software development and that's, that's um sewing and you know there's and then you realize well all the other things at least in my case in, in your case i'm not quite sure how but I, I actually feel sort of all it all comes together and i need needed pretty much all of these stops to actually be able to do what i'm doing now yes well you know it's funny you say that and i want to apologize because i was looking at your face at the bottom of my screen so i made you bigger so now i'm looking up <laughs> so oh. sorry if my eyes were down the whole first part of the interview I'm up now no but I actually totally concur and it it actually I wrestled for a long time because I always felt that I was more analytical than an artist and it wasn't until I realized that Leonardo da Vinci was the best of both he was not only an artist but he was also a scientist yeah. so that kind of uh made me open up you know my mind to that other part of myself and i think a lot of artistry is very structured it's very analytical and i do i actually behave in, a, in those manners when i actually interact with clients stuff like that there's a lot of analysis that takes yeah. place so i totally agree with you i think it all just gels together and i think yeah. all these gifts and qualities actually help make us who we are and actually just i think really help us in our craft completely oh that's that's so true i've always said well look you know, running a software project and running a sewing project is actually exactly the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> the processes. I mean, the only thing that's exactly. different is the implementation, you know, uh, but, but the whole process, okay, you know, I need to understand, you know, who the client is, what you're looking for. And, and then I go away and then I design it and then we have a fitting and then there's, it's like exactly. a really similar process. It's, um, yeah. So what, what, what would you say you love most about, you know having your own sewing studio and you know and doing the what's what's the thing you love most well even though i still feel like i'm coming to really know myself as an as an artist i like that when it comes to sewing i love being able to it's a very good question i think i love the the main crux and underlying point is that i love to make women feel beautiful and i sew for when women men kids all that but i love to beautify people and i guess i love to reiterate that beauty in clothes in a sense it's just kind of a way to do that i mean it adorns us and it actually really does impact how we feel think and even behave and i love using clothing as kind of a means to to join or just second that notion that you know we're all beautiful we're all unique and then just to further help people in their you know special occasions or at their weddings it just helps the mood and the, the environment yeah. i just like yeah. it like that definitely agree that's so true and as you know for dancers it's as you know in, in, if, if i think of the dancers it's like very very true and i've actually had a client say to me she ordered like this you know, last minute, oh my God, I need a dress for next Saturday. They've called me up for the final of the competition I she'd entered. And I said, well, we just finished the dress. She goes, but you know, like putting on a new dress for the first time, I walk on stage a different way, you know, with yes. confidence and have a new dress and, you know, I'm kind of, you know, and it's that confidence that you really actually exactly. giving to people. And when you have, you know, I actually had a, a, you know, there were people from a choir, you know, they weren't actually dancers. And, and this, this lady goes, Oh my God, this dress make, gives me the figure I don't have. So <laughs> I'm excited. And, and so, you know, that feel that, that, you know, how, how will she step out on the street? You know, I mean, the shoulders will be a little bit further back and, you That's know, right. she, head higher <laughs> and, and, and the way she walks and the way she feels. And I, yeah, I definitely agree. I agree with you. Um, is there anything that you don't like or, you know, what's your biggest pet peeve <laughs> when you deal with clients? And Well, that's a good one. Um, you know, indecisiveness is probably one of those pet peeves. Also, people that have 
grandiose ideas, but they're unrealistic in their expectations. Unfortunately, um, and I'm really blessed to be really good at dealing with people and having very diplomatic reasoning skills. So, you know, I can kind of implant an idea and make it seem like you thought of it, yeah. <laughs> you know, and also yeah. diffuse situations and stuff like that. But my biggest pet peeve would sometimes be those dynamics, but I have not had a hard time navigating those because in the end you can kind of tell if you can definitely satisfy someone versus setting yourself up for failure and you never want to put yourself in that situation and i actually put my clients before me i never want them to be in a situation where they want something i know is not going to be right for them i make it and then they're sorely disappointed i cannot do that to them so it's always sometimes it can be tricky navigating those waters yeah yeah no no i definitely agree and i've I, this is there's it's a, it's a, it's an area where I, I often think back on the software development uh, days because there we always had this there was this running joke to say well the worst thing you can do if you want to really uh, screw up a project is do what the client asks you to do you know <laughs> you know it, it seems kind I think of they're onto something <laughs> but but it it really um, is true in a sense that uh, you yeah. don't ever want to do blindly what the client tells you they want yeah. Is, you yeah. know, there's this whole step. Okay, you may be t me telling me this, but you know exactly what you said. Well, I know like this is going to be horrible, so it isn't going to be flattering. And then so you kind of have to get out and say, well, no, what you actually really want is this, or you know, to sort of translate that, yes. you know, because yes. if, because people, you know, sometimes they try and kind of do your work and they try and kind of tell you how to do things, and and you need to be very careful. And that was like really, really. Yeah, the software software yeah. projects help a lot in that sense. Well, let me chime in too. I think the worst phrase I I like detest hearing, it makes me cringe, is when someone wants something done, they'll usually say, oh, that's just easy. Just yeah. do da 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 da, A, B, C, that's easy. Yeah. And then I'll respond with a question, when's the last time you made that? And yeah. then it usually kind of yeah. <laughs> settles them a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's kind that's, of funny. that's exactly that. <laughs> um, what would so what what are your plans for for the future so any apart from your from your newly launched show that i actually going to i'm going to try and see whether i i don't i was actually trying to to do a screen share but I'm, oh you're so sweet i don't know whether whether that actually works hang on um because i know i had it oh, that's yeah. okay i really appreciate the plug <laughs> for the tailor and the dressmaker hang on oh. i'm clicking buttons and it just goes away oh <laughs> mean technology uh hang on there it is can you see it I can't, but maybe you're... Is that shared now? I'm not sure whether that's actually shared. Yeah, I can see your lovely face. I don't see anything else. Okay. Ah, now we go. Now we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's us. Yeah, so that's, that's, and I definitely want to congratulate you for that. Thank that, you. That's very sweet. I actually, thank you. I actually, yeah, watched it. And thank um, you. And if anybody's interested in watching it, they can find it at James no, I'm Harlan. Put the link in the. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, um, you know, part of it. I mean, we we want to inspire, you know, other crazy sewing, passionate <laughs> sewing women, or and men. But uh, I mean, also, I do want to give you a platform to, you know to to promote your projects and your business oh, I appreciate it you're so kind and uh, i definitely want to put a link to to your show in the bottom there and thank you uh, so yeah what 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 are you your plans or projects or in for the for the future 
Oh, that's a loaded question. Well, I my business has been centered around. So I started my business, Tailored Scenes by Victoria, in 2006. And um, I was actually prodded by my father to start it, my late father. And God bless him. I had been sewing only for two years. And I didn't think I'm one of those weird people where I was like, I need 10 years of experience. I need to amass all this, you know, yeah. you know, anyway, awards, all this good stuff before I actually do anything. And he just gave me the elbow and was like, go for it. And yeah. I cried the entire first month that I started. Um, but I started my business and I've been doing it ever since. So I can't believe it's been, you know, almost 10 years. Um, but it's custom apparel for all my clients and anything else they usually need. But I focus really on special occasion. Yeah. And looking into the future, I custom apparel is awesome. And I love making custom gowns for clients. But I know there's only one me and I put so much of my heart and soul into it. There's just not enough time to be able to do as much and turn over as much as I like. So I would love to in, um, add to that a made to order line and um, kind of like do more ready to wear, get into designing. And then I have some other ideas about how to make styling easier for people. So I have some kind of ideas and coming out with that. And then there's the show. So I have some kind of cool things on the back burner. They're percolating. <laughs> Perfect. So definitely I'll be following it. And then you who knows in in six months time we might do a follow-up and see, see oh, great. What, what you're up to um so if you were to talk to someone who's kind of well maybe started to kind of sew for people but i've, I've recently let a, read a lot of comments on blog posts so where a lot of people seem to be you know having the idea and obviously you know if you're passionate about something then it's kind of a logical step to try well if i could you know instead of now having to close this up and go to the office and you know just counting down the hours until i can can get home so i can get back to sewing so you've done that <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a logical idea to have to think well if i could make money doing this you know, if I could pay the bills doing this, that would be fantastic. But then I see a lot of people seem to try it, but then get discouraged by, you know, so the the demanding clients and then the ones who kind of go, oh, well, but I can buy this at Walmart for, for 10, for, you know, for 10 bucks. And so that, you know, and they kind of- Lots of those. Clients. There's lots of people who kind of try and then, oh, well, I don't sew for other people anymore. So yeah. or if someone's kind of sitting on the fence, if you were to give them a piece of advice, what would you tell them? Well, you know, Aka, we, that's always a loaded question. And I think that's a question that just, unfortunately, I know there's someone listening that's probably just rotated <laughs> through their mind nonstop. And then, like you said, they go through the day in and day out drudgery of, you know, this is my life. I don't know what else I need to do. How do I change it? And for that person, I would just say, you know, I think someone asked the question is, if your life was to end tomorrow, what would you without reluctance just kind of jump into? You know, if you didn't have to consider anything past that that point, what today would you do to kind of try to feel like you're, you're living life to the fullest? And, uh, you know, it is scary. I'm not going to lie. It's very nerve wracking. It takes a lot of faith. For me, I mean, I was ready to transition from my job. I got tired of marine research, not so much tired. I just, after doing it for so long, I was ready to see something else. And I was ready to flip that chapter, so to speak. But there's a lot of fear involved. And for everybody, I would definitely encourage them to just kind of gird up that courageousness, um, you know, join and connect with people that are very courageous. I have, I'm involved in a couple of masterminding groups. I'm in a oh, business cool. masterminding group. Yeah. It's really great. Um, you know, we have people there to affirm you. Um, I definitely, I'm, you know, I have Christian beliefs, so I, I definitely <laughs> pray a lot and, you know, seek guidance. Um, I definitely need that from God and um, just to kind of feel like, okay, what I believe in purpose and it's nothing better than when you feel like you were living your life to its purpose. There's just this vitality that gets unleashed within yourself. And if anything, you feel like you're making a difference and you're being a part and that there's space for you in this world. And I think we're all uniquely geniuses. And I feel really sad that people don't realize there's there's no other Anka out there. No one is packaged quite like you. You have your specific set of skills, thoughts, concepts, ideas, the way you even do things. I could not mimic you. 
that's what makes you unique. And I think as soon as people discover that uniqueness about them, they'll feel a little bit more courage. But I will say, if there's a road to that uniqueness. You don't discover it right off that. And I, I, you said something earlier, it was so true. You took a path and then it kind of led you around the corner and then you found your sweet spot. Mm. It takes a minute to find that, but you gotta try something, so. Mm. No, that's very true, definitely true. Well, Victoria, thank you so much. And You're so welcome. Uh, it was so exciting meeting you and I would definitely love to repeat, um, you know, on on camera or well, on camera probably until <laughs> until <laughs> the next trip to the States, it's probably going to be on camera, but, um, you know, an in, in interview or not. But I would uh, love that. It's fantastic meeting you and thanks so much for sharing your story and um, giving inspiration. So I hope to talk to you soon and uh, absolutely goodbye for today, I'd say. Okay. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure and honor. Thanks to all your viewers and you are such an inspiration. I would say, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. I just talked over you. Uh, just before I forget, please do send me a website or, or, you know, I've got the links to the show, but if you want anything, you know, any other website or Facebook profile or anything you'd like uh, to people to be able to find you, then please send that through. So we can I sure will. In, okay. In the video. Well, thanks so much. And thank uh, you. Soon. All right. Bye. You do the same. Bye, sweetie.